Hello, one and all. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back to the Skyrim Archaeological Survey. We are indeed back, and hopefully we'll have something like normal service resu resuming soon. Uh, I am joined, as ever, by the, the excellent Liv Westring. Hello, Liv. Hello. Hello. Glad to be back. Glad to be back, indeed. Uh, uh, has everything settled down now? Is everything you know in place and ship shape? Oh, some furniture is still moving in, but I'm good to go with recording. Furniture and the floor, I do believe. Well, the floor is finished now, so that's <laughs> nice. <laughs> but unless, okay, so we're, we're all set up and we're back here in uh, in Tamriel. And today we figured we'd, we would get back into the swing of things by exploring Skyhaven Temple. Uh, Skyhaven Temple is a, is a very important temple, which... Um, seemingly is, is at the heart of, in some ways, at the heart of understanding the reason for the ancient Nord temples being, uh, well, be, being prolific across the, the, the province of Skyrim, but also the relationship between the ancient Nords and their dragon masters, and also what happened next. It, it sort of, in some ways, sets the, the, the dragonborn um, on, on his, his or her path over the years, mm -hmm. over the over the millennia. Uh, so at the moment, we're currently looking at the sort of the ravine that you have to traverse to get into the the entrance to the temple. So you sort of start off in the distance there, don't you, and make your way up here. And as you as you come up here, um, is there much in the way of resistance? Are there any enemies or or traps or anything like that? Um, yes, you have to pass through a couple of forsworn camps to get here. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh, but then, as you get in here, it's fairly, fairly easy going. Okay. Uh, but then again, you probably slaughtered a couple of hundred people to get here, so it's <laughs> nice to have a breather. <laughs> now that's actually something that. So, so just before we started recording, it's worthwhile saying um, that uh, that you had to offload some material because you are over encumbered. Um, you're carrying yes. so much stuff that you couldn't walk, um, and it's interesting how. Uh, in this world, it is possible to do things like that. It's possible to 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 do very unrealistic things in terms of carrying material. So, for example, you, as I was saying, you would never pick up an elephant, for example. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you'd never, you'd never. Oh, I think I'll put that in my pocket and then um, be brought to your knees. But also, the idea of actually, in a very real sense, you you are to, in order to, to traverse this landscape, the slaughtering hundreds of of, of enemies and bandits and monsters. Um, it's it's a, it's an interesting thought, and and I think as we've jokingly touched on, I think a Skyrim archaeologist would have to be prolific at combat. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, but it just it's uh, for some reason I find myself reflecting on on our bloodied path. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, I I imagine like I think I've said it before, a pacifist wouldn't do good in. The field of archaeology in Skyrim. No, no, no. It very, would be incredibly hard be unless just... you're the best illusion magic master in the world. I think so. Yeah, unless you can just sneak past everything. Yeah. Now, um, so if we if we turn around, uh, this is sort of as we turn, we'll we'll be facing the entrance um, of the temple, and uh, this temple is actually located east of Markarth, a top. A mountain, and it can only be reached by going through uh, Karth Spire, uh, surrounded mm -hmm. by Forsworn um, and uh, Forsworn enemies. That is, uh, the path leading to the temple is full of puzzles and traps that can be solved, disabled, um, and traversed only by the Dragonborn um, or a Dragonborn. Thankfully, we are a Dragonborn in this game, which is fantastic. Yes, it's very, very handy. Yep. And as we enter now, I suppose into the temple area, this seems to be a a, a little um, well, actually, it's a sort of feature that you get, and, and I often find myself referring to prehistoric monuments in, in these uh, these reflections. And so much as this feels like a, a sort of a, um, a a a well a welcoming sort of paddock, almost an area where people can come and possibly, if they if they're sufficiently important, come to here. But even then, go no further. This feels like a place where people can maybe would watch other people enter into the temple. Mm -hmm. um, what, what do you what do you make of the of the architecture here? Uh, I think it's really interesting because it's very similar to the dragon 
cult temples uh -huh. uh, in one way, but it also has a distinct difference if you look at how it's like like the, that it's opening up and it's the entrance is very clear. Mm. Uh, you also have like the open sky above, mm -hmm. uh, as we can see. Yeah. Uh, so uh, this is a place where the where the the mountain meets the sky. Yeah. And I suppose hence Sky Haven Temple, I suppose. So you meant to probably meant to have the sky yeah. in mind. But it's also like it's very remote compared to where any of the cities lie uh -huh. uh, in Skyrim. Uh, so you have to know where to look to find it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, and it makes sense with the history of the place. Mm. Uh, uh, but it's it's made to be a headquarters rather than a temple. Well, and that's the thing is it it, it feels as though uh, it feels as though possibly the use of this space has evolved over time, in so much as this is a very um, it's, it's a slightly decrepit place, but it's also still being used as the headquarters of the is it the blades? Mm -hmm. And um, and who are the blades? Can you just remind us uh, what they do? Well, the blades uh, originally are basically an order that hunts dragons, mm -hmm. um, and the dragonborn is traditionally in Elder Scroll lore uh, aided by the blades. Right. Uh, they also protected the emperor of well when the dragonborn was an emperor uh, and. Uh, that, in the Oblivion Crisis. Uh, is that Tiber Septim himself? Yeah, Tiber Septim himself. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Um, so they have been a really important part of uh, like world history. Uh, but then at the moment they're being hunted by uh, the Falmar. Uh, because, well, polit politics. Yeah. Uh, now, now it's interesting because, because also the, in some ways, that being here is kind of the culmination in terms of story of an mm -hmm. arc that begins very early on when you bump into your first Blades member, and she, yeah. she takes you out to a dragon, um, a dragon grave where a dragon is recently is about to come alive, uh, or sorry, to be reanimated, and mm -hmm. uh, and so so yeah, so so in some respects, you're now being brought into the fold and. And presumably, be also being assessed as well as you get here. People are like, "Hmm, is this person right for us? Is, it, is there are they a right fit?" Because also, as you say, there's a risk in allowing people here. Absolutely, and yeah. also, uh, the blades were, as I have understood the story, under the impression that the dragonborn, the dragonborns were in extinct, more or less. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and now the dragons are rising, and they were pretty much like. Well, I guess we're gonna do our duty. Mm -hmm. Not that it's going to matter much, but hell, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> someone's gotta try. And mm -hmm. then the dragonborn shows up and is like, "Hello, I have no idea what's going on, <laughs> but I just ate a dragon soul." Indeed, we are a clueless, clueless dragonborn as a protagonist in this game. Uh, okay, so uh, as we approach this door, there, I mean, the door looks very much like it. Well, dragon-like. It's almost like you're entering into the skull of the the collar mm -hmm. of a dragon, isn't it? And um, it's also really interesting with the door. We can't see it now because I've already opened it. Uh -huh. But this circle that we see here yeah. uh, is the lock uh, and the key mechanism to the door. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so the blades did not have access to their own headquarters until the Dragonborn came along. Uh, because you need Dragonborn blood to open the door. Right. Okay. And so, how, how, how I, I can't. It's been a while since I played this section. How how did we get the dragonborn blood? Uh, you simply like cut your hand and bleed a little bit on it, and then it opens up. Oh, okay. Okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. So no no sacrifice. No no. Or exactly. uh, no sacrifice you can't live with. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. Um. So so. So in that sense, then, you're, in allowing them in, uh, are we all then, um, the Dragonborn and also the other Blades, and that, uh, we're all discovering what's in here then? There must have been yeah. stories about it 
circulate, circulate, circulating amongst the, the blades. But I, it, it occurs to me as we enter that actually this, even this corridor not being straight is increasing this sense of mystery. You know, mm -hmm. you're, you're coming into a place that you can't, uh, you don't know quite what to be prepared for. I find that interesting. Absolutely. Mm. You also have to remember that uh, to get here, you have passed through like a lot of wide land and you have already gone through a couple of traps and things to even get to the door that you open with Dragonborn Blood. So it's, it's all a little bit um, Cavern of the Secretive. Crescent Moon. <laughs> it's, a bit, it's a bit Indiana Jones in that sense. Um, yeah. Uh, interesting, okay. And again, we have another windy corridor here. Are they? Are those? Um, are those bar reliefs? Uh, are they uh, carvings on the wall or anything in particular depicted? Do you think? Um, it that... looks a bit like some kind of dragon motif. Yeah, but also quite worn as well, aren't they? Yeah. So do you think these have been worn by years of passing traffic, perhaps? Potentially. Hmm. Interesting. And again, we we yeah, we be have this, this pathway that is not immediately clear to us, you have to go around a corner to, to enter. Yeah, it. and it's very defensible. It is, yeah, yeah, narrow choke point doorways, yeah. And also, actually, even this staircase is not actually, all these steps here, they're not actually uniform, they're all a bit higgledy mm. higgledy. It's interesting. Yeah, I, do you know, it, this, this place, more, I think, than any other place that we've seen so far, this place reminds me of, um, things like basalt, sort of volcanic rock that's been sh mm -hmm. cut into chunks and shaped and formed. And uh, so the, the base of this, this central chamber here is, um, is very much like little chunks of basalt. And, and even over the doorway there, we get this sort of uh, slightly uh, antiquated mm -hmm. and different form of architecture. So is, is this... A, this presumably is a is a place, and especially given given what we now we sort of come to learn about the uh, the sculpture over what there on the wall. The this is the story of of the thought the fall of Alduin. Um, do you think this place was built soon after uh, humanity um, emancipated itself from the rule of the dragons in ancient times? I think so. I mean, I think this whole place speaks of both an immense need to tell your own story mm -hmm. and have it preserved through time mm -hmm. but also about a sense of cautious relief mm -hmm. and that you're hoping that this is a stable place for time being so you can prepare uh, because so it, there is a prophecy yeah. that tells you that it isn't all chill. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. And I suppose it, it, yeah, it does feel like a place of um, of reflection, but also uh, a place where one can prepare for something. Like, like, yeah, like I mean, yeah. I would say that the layout of this room uh, works as much as a grand like war room from an ancient castle or keep. Yeah, almost like a like a, a war cabinet type place. Yeah. Yeah, like a gathering hall, where you can collect your allies. Uh, you can reflect on like what you know from history, but also plan mm. for the future. What What's that at the head of the table? In the the is that a stone sculpture itself on the table? Seems to be some kind of altar. That's interesting. So, up from the side, is it is it is it possibly a dragon's head or? Mm, looks maybe. Yeah, yeah. Actually, it looks almost like a hawk, doesn't it? Like a yeah. with an open mouth. Um, it's more bird-like than dragon-like, I'd say. Yeah. Oh, actually, it almost looks like the hawk is doing a, a water slide down the table. <laughs> I was going to say that it almost looks like uh, like a boat. Oh yeah, yeah, I can see that. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Okay. So, uh, so in so this place here, I, I've seen it described in um, uh, on the uh, Elder Scrolls wiki as being a dining room, but I don't think I don't I think that doesn't really do it justice. I think it feels more like a meeting place in so much as 
are, yeah. there, are there any areas in this temple for um or, or what well, it's called a temple in this place for um for preparing food uh, i don't know there are living quarters uh -huh. uh, and let's see we have a few like places like empty chambers yeah empty yeah. chambers and storerooms and stuff like that uh -huh. but you if we go upstairs i'm just going to manage to do that but actually, it, 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 everything here, every aspect of the architecture is utterly distinct from from the uh, the, the temples that we've seen. And given yeah. given that the, so the, the things like the barrows and the tombs that we've been exploring uh, are presumably a bit older than this place, because they, they come mm -hmm. from a time when the dragons were still, or Alduin in particular, was still in charge. Um, and do you think this could be a, a, a deliberate expression of human will and architecture? in these shapes and I forms. think so and I think it's like it has taken a lot from like the dragon cult culture if we say say like that yeah yeah but I think it's also an expression of like of rebellion against it well it's much more angular in terms of art. yeah there's not there's not the wavy lines that we see in the architecture of, of other other as I say the other surveys that we've done so far um, there's this huge fireplace here as well. I quite like that. Um, mm -hmm. So this, this, so this is very much like a, 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 a barracks, I guess. It feels like, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah. Now, Esbern, um that's that's the person. Sorry, that the 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 lady you just passed. That's the person who first. T who, uh, yeah, that's Daphne. Connects with you first. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And then Esbern is the uh, is the uh, is the the lead with the blade at this point. Um, and this, so this gallery here, this always, this always fascinated me. This, this wide door, uh, to, to just, just behind us, I guess. Um, mm -hmm. uh, what? That's incredibly wide. Do you think that this is, this is designed for people to walk shoulder by, you know, shoulder to shoulder up and down? I is, think so. And I also, I'm also imagining that it's made to impress. Yeah. Yeah. Well, wait, it's made to show whoever comes there that we are the blades. We are amazing. Well, and presumably, so if you if you go back, if you just head back down the steps for a second and look down, down on the um, on the sort of the central space, it, it almost feels like people could arrive up as we did, and then mm -hmm. be greeted with with a row of people emerging from above. Uh, Absolutely, and. Uh, it also connects well to what's outside of those big doors. Okay. Uh, because you have a fairly impressive view of the landscape, if I don't remember it wrong. Okay. Uh, which makes it a, a great like scouting post to see if someone comes. Mm. So you can be appropriately dramatic for your guests. <laughs> oh, I see. So you could be you could be watching. People are approaching and then go quick, yeah. quick. <laughs> yeah. like, this is the so-called upper courtyard. I call it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, and this, now this place. When I first came here, I always thought that this place looks incredibly, uh, well, frankly, very ch uh, Chinese or Japanese in terms of mm -hmm. architecture. And yet, it's obviously it's built in stone, but it has the sort of pagoda kind of um, roofs. Oh, I see. And it's, so, is that is that is that road the approach then to the place? Yeah. Right. Yeah. So you could be out here, watching, observing, and then, yeah, run back in and go. <coughs> I've been yes. expecting you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> and I mean, it's it's really impressive from the outside, from this part as well. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yeah, well, and, and so again, this 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 architecture is so distinctive. It it really, uh, I mean, it's also worthwhile bearing in mind that if, so if this was built either during the war with drag with dragons or um, uh, afterwards, the fact that this is so visible and the, the, this ostentatious element of the architecture is so visible from the sky and from the top mm -hmm. at the top of the mountain. It also feels like a statement to anything anything that's that's flying by as well. Yeah, you know. I mean, I'm think I'm saying that like it's almost invisible if you don't know where it is from mm -hmm. the ground. Mm -hmm. 
run from the sky, you would see it, and as a dragon, you would know that that are those people. Yeah. Those pesky rebels. Well, and and I wonder, uh, I wonder where they got the idea for the for these flared roofs from, if you know what I mean, and and how how this particular form of architecture evolved. It must have been. Mm -hmm. uh, well, see, it makes me think of things like the. Um, uh, I don't know. I suppose in Western culture, uh, an example of this would be the founding, for example, of um, of uh, of America. I guess, you know, when you yeah. have, when you have people making decisions, formal decisions about what the structure of their society is going to be. Um, and so you can imagine this being a place where you know the equivalent of uh, you know a constitution is written, this kind of thing. Absolutely. Uh, and again, it has that feeling. It has a feeling of a of a of a, a place where lots of people can come together. Private conversations can happen in and around these grand meetings. Um, but also, as well, it's a setting that's consciously created for 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 what comes next after Alduin. Hmm. So, so at this point, do we know if um, uh, presumably Parthenax, the uh, the dragon who who is helpful, shall we say? I won't I won't say spoil too much about how and where we meet Parthenax. <laughs> um, but Parthenax, I guess, would have been around at this point and may may yeah. have, may have been being consulted in terms of this, the what was happening. Um, so so if we look at if we look at the uh, at the 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 sculpture, um, there is actually a, a lecture that we're given, isn't there, when we first come into the temple uh, mm -hmm. by Esbern. And uh, if we well, we, we've we've tried it. Uh, I'll, I'll be transparent. We've tried a couple of ways to watch it, as it were, with you, the viewer, live, but it doesn't quite work. So, we're just going to insert it here. You can watch it, <laughs> and then come back to us. But uh, but it's it is worth watching, definitely. In terms of it gives it, it gives a context to what's happening on the wall here. Here is your man. This panel goes back to the beginning of time, when Alduin and the Dragon Cult ruled over Skyrim. Here, the humans rebelled against their dragon overlord, the legendary dragon war. Alduin's defeat is the centerpiece of the war. You see, here is fallen from the sky. The Nord talks, masters of the voice, are arrayed against him. So does it show how they defeated him? Isn't that why we're here? Ah, patience, my dear. The Akaviri were not a straightforward people. Everything is couched in allegory. Mythic symbol. Yes, yes. This here, coming from the mouths of the Nord heroes, this is the Akaviri symbol for shout. But there's no way to know what shout is meant. You mean they used a shout to defeat Alduin? You're sure? Hmm? Oh, yes. Presumably something rather specific to dragons. Or even Alduin himself. Remember, this is where they recorded all the news of Alduin. So we're looking for a shout then. Damn it. Have you ever heard of such a thing? A shout that can knock a dragon out of the sky? You're probably right. I was hoping to avoid having to involve them in this, but it seems we have no choice. Right. Good thing they've already let you into their little cult. Not likely they'd help Esbern or me if we came calling. We'll look around Skyhaven Temple and see what else the old blades might have left for us. It's a better hideout than I could have hoped for. Talos, guard you. Look here, in the third panel. The prophecy which brought the Akaviri to Tamriel in the first place, in search of the Dragonborn. Here are the Akaviri, the blades. You see their distinctive long swords. Now they need their ancient mission fulfilled as the last Dragonborn contends with Alduin at the end of time. Are you paying attention, Delphine? You might learn something of our own history. So this is this is absolutely reinforcing the the nature of this room. It's reminding everyone why they're there, what they've just defeated, mm -hmm. and again, maybe inspiring them as to what, what comes next. Uh, to the left, we seem to have this story of the humans rising against Alduin and the dragons and humans... Um, uh, finally, bringing him down in the center of of the uh, of the 
uh, of the sculpture. Um, and did it, I suppose, given this context of, of, of what we've just been talking about in terms of hopefulness, this seems to be uh, this seems to be a very grim and um, what's the word frowned, furrowed, browed reminder uh, of of what they've just fought. Um, I, I suppose I wouldn't I wouldn't find it easy to be overly optimistic in the shadow of this. I mean, what what, what do you make of it? Um, I mean, uh, very much so. I think it's uh, a reminder for everyone that's that has survived. Uh -huh. uh, the final battle with Alduin back then uh, that it's not the end uh, and that you can't relax too much mm. like it's it's a mural of we can't forget our past we have to acknowledge our present and we cannot like ignore the future mm. Mm. Uh, especially since we have this prophecy of the Dragonborn having to end it all for the final time. Uh, yeah, well, and in that sense, the Elders will just prophesy the events that occurred during Elder Scrolls, um, uh, Arena, Daggerfall, Morrowind, Oblivion, and Skyrim. It, it mm -hmm. sort of touches on all of these different... Uh, it's sort of tying together a, a grand um, tapestry of, of the human story. And I, I can't help but wonder... Um, I don't know. Do you think? Do you think? Sorry, my, my my head's sort of skipping ahead a couple of notches. In so much as, so we, in, in other places in the game, we hear about the throat of the world, uh, which mm -hmm. is the place where obviously the um, the long the greybeards live, where we uh, we we visit fairly early on in the game. That being yeah. one of, one of the central points and focuses of the the legend of Tiber Septim and the uh, the the line of kings and the story of humanity in Tamriel. But is is it places like this that are the epicenters of even actually imperial culture? Really, this this is what sort of relinquishes all of Tamriel from from the sway of of dragons. Or do you think this actually what we're seeing here is a much more local monument? And and so I, I would say so. I, I would also say that this is a place that connects Skyrim as a region mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, to the events of the world. Mm. Yes. Uh, Okay. Because this is this is very central to world history, not just Skyrim history. Yeah, yeah, no, exactly, yeah. Okay, so um, I suppose uh, is there anything else in the, in the Skyhaven Temple to see? Um, not much. I mean, we have it's it's not a big location if we speak Skyrim wise. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Um. And I think that also is interesting because when you look at, like, there are other temples in the area mm -hmm. uh, that are so much vaster in, like, square space. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but this is basically it. This is basically the whole temple. Mm. Uh, and everywhere you go inside of the temple, you always come back to this room. Well, and actually, in that sense, it's interesting because I suppose, as you were just saying, it, 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 this isn't the biggest uh, in terms of footprint, but this is probably one of the biggest rooms in the game, actually. Yeah. Um, and and again, there's something about intervisibility, and uh, again, the the yeah, the thing I keep on coming back to is this idea of um, of a, a society make starting again. There's something about the openness of this space. Mm -hmm. um, and and yet, as I say, there are places to like remaking yourself. Well, exactly, yeah, remaking yourself in yeah, in the light of each other's gaze, and, and of course, there are places mm -hmm. to to go off and have you know have private conversations. But presumably, formal business, actual proper decisions, are made in this place where everyone can see you. And yeah, I like that. I think it's really interesting. And actually, also, it's interesting because I've never, I didn't, I don't think I really understood that when I first came here playing the game. Um, I don't think I did either. No, or... no. I think I think I just thought of this as a place. Uh, I don't know really. A place where, well, actually, I think I was I was probably quite sort of just in the midst of of the quest. Okay, what happens next? You know, uh, as opposed to actually taking in 
the, the specific function of this place. Because it's also it's interesting that they that they have these two NPCs uh, living here now. So now that, now that you've come <laughs> into the place, they just walk around, sit down, talk to you if you want to interact with them. Um, it sort of reinforces the the vastness and the hugeness of the room. And, yeah. uh, and actually, just, just for, a moment, for a moment, in terms of game design, do you think that might be an intention of them staying here? In so much as, do, do you think if they weren't here, you would lose that sense of scale? I mean, I know you have I think have so, I think that, so, but... because then you would, you would see the room with only the room as a reference. Yeah, exactly, yeah, yeah. Yeah, whereas actually having, having someone move around, sit down and, and, and go from room to room, I think you have that sense of this place being actually now a little bit dead as well. Yeah, and also, I mean, if we just look at what we see at the screen at the moment, like, the, the scale of the room, I mean, if we look at Esbjörn sitting and then we look at the pillar behind him... Mm. Mm. And presumably this, this whole space has been... This, this was something I was wondering about outside, um, is whether it's carved out of the mountain. I think it is. I think it's all... I think so, too. I mean, we can see how they have used natural light to light the place. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and there's no, like, decoration to the ceiling. No. Uh, but, and the floor looks as though it is, in, in places, dressed stone, but also in places it undulates with the floor of the cavern, almost like they've mm -hmm. just sort of carved the cavern floor itself into rough block shapes uh, to, to sort of to replicate co uh, some sort of cobbled surface or something like that which again in itself is is interesting because that's a decision given given the, then the amount yeah it's clear, clearly they had the the human uh, the human power the, uh, the, the 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 bodies to make this place whatever they wanted and yet they kept mm -hmm. the, the slightly naturalistic floor and a very naturalistic ceiling to the cavern um, I wonder if this if this was a, if this was already a cavern though. Because I imagine digging this out would be. Yeah, I, I wouldn't imagine that you would, like, hollow out the whole mountain. No, no. I would Im imagine that they maybe expanded an existing cave. Yeah, that makes sense. Because the the walls are rather smooth, mm. even though they're odd angles. Do you know what? Do you know what just occurred to me? This is. This is it. This is a bit like a nuclear bunker as well. It is. I think. I think that that's that's what's been on the tip of my tongue. It is like a meeting place, and it has that feeling of a place where people gather for war or gather for, for decisions. It has that openness, but also it feels like, and it makes sense again if you've just been fighting dragons. Um, build a room inside a mountain with walls that are thirty feet, sixty feet of stone. Um, mm -hmm. That's. That's perfect, actually, in that sense. Uh, I see this. This is this is why I enjoy these these uh, these kind of explorations. Is that I like the fact that we we can come across these ideas just while while reflecting. Um, I suppose all this place is missing is is a is a, a computer with a big red button on it to to launch a Counter Strike. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But it also, in the sense of a bunker, mm -hmm. I am a bit puzzled over having open space to let na natural light in when you're fighting dragons. Well, yeah, yeah, they could just breathe fire down, yeah. And basically toast you, like pizza. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so maybe, uh, well, okay, okay, fair enough. Okay, so maybe, maybe, the, well, maybe, maybe, because also we, have, we need to remember that, again, they did have, they did have ally, uh, at least one ally dragon, if not a couple. Maybe what we're seeing here is the holes in the ceiling are results of this place having been besieged by dragons, maybe. Possibly. That so, would make more sense in my mind. Yeah. So maybe they did actually build it, or initially come here as a bunker, and then at some point dragons were punching holes in the ceiling. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, it also, like, if I'm going to be kind, uh, if they were going to breathe fire in any other way, it would let a lot of smoke out. Yeah, yeah. So you would have less of a risk of suffocating. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah, okay. So it, it, yeah, so yeah, it, it, that could be the case. But also, I think I think there's something to be said for because um, you also need to remember that this place 
I guess sees lots of snow and rain mm -hmm. and uh, and it's not ideal to build these holes in the ceilings for that so I, I, mm. I, I'm inclined to think that the holes are the results of um, of combat and yeah uh, we know, unless we can inspect them. I would love closer. to be able to go topside and have a look at them. Well, I mean, well, is it possible to go on top? Or? I don't think so. I don't think I can climb all the way up there. Ah, oh, okay. I see. That's that's a shame. That's a shame. Is it, I wonder if there's any way to do a to sort of untether yourself in this game to sort of fly around. Well, if I like, if I had done a bit more domain quest, I guess I could call the dragon and fly up there. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Actually, how about, how about if we, um, if we make a note of that for a, a future video on aerial survey, maybe? We can do an aerial survey yeah, from a dragon. Yeah, that would be cool. Yeah. And uh, just, just make a note of places we want to fly over with our dragon <laughs> 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 to have a look at. But okay, this is this has been interesting, and also it's been it's been good to you know get back on the horse with with such a a, a, mm -hmm. a, 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 yeah, a particular site, but also a site that's as you say not too extensive. I think there's plenty of room here to to think, but we haven't had to 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 keep on uh, exploring and explaining each room as we go. I think there's lots of here, lots here to to reflect on. I, I'm again I'm just drawn to that to the to the the shapes of the roofs out here. Mm -hmm. I think I think they're they're wonderful. Um, yeah, it's a really beautiful sight. It yeah. is, yeah. Well, and and frankly, it ha it has the feel of a of a like a, almost like a Tibetan monastery or this kind of thing, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. um, a haven, as much as a well, a Sky Haven Temple. Hey! <laughs> of course, it's all, it's almost like it's in the name. Um, okay, well, with that, with that bombshell of obviousness i think we should bring this to a close <laughs> yeah <laughs> um thank you guys for uh for for watching and for listening and for frankly also for waiting patiently for the next uh, uh, uh install install installment of our uh, ongoing survey uh our plan is to get back on the uh, the fortnightly schedule mm -hmm. uh, as much close as possible and if you have any thoughts, ideas, or uh, a wish list for places for us to visit next, uh, just comment below. Let us know. Um, but but be gentle. I think I think our next one again, we'll go for one that's sort of medium size, maybe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think so. I think so. Um, thank you for your time today, Liv. And uh, thank you. Yeah. Very well. Thank you. And um, also thank you everyone again for watching. Until next time, do take care. Bye bye. Bye bye. <laughs>